Hello again. So far, we have just installed Maven. Now this tool will help us organize and build our Java application. In this video, we're going to look at how to generate Java projects using Maven. We'll also learn about Maven archetypes and how they help us generate the code we need for individual projects. To start, let's look at the simplest POM file. Now this file contains all the information you need to compile your application. Pretty simple, right? That's it. Add this file to a code directory and you are good to go. It sounds almost too crazy to be true. So let's go try it. First, create a directory from the command prompt. Now you can use any name. I'm going to use test app. Then create a text file with this information and name it pom.xml. To save yourself from typing, you can also use the pom file included in the code supplement for this video. Once you're done, go back to your command prompt. Let's type in the command mvn install. You'll see lots of messages fly by your window. Now it's nothing we need to worry about now. Basically, it's compiling all the code files, but in our case, we don't have any, and creating a jar file. When you go look in the target directory, your code is compiled and you even have a compiled jar with no code in it. So you're probably wondering, how in the heck does all this work? Maven makes many assumptions about your project and project structure. Maven expects all of your code to be in a directory called source main Java, and all unit tests are assumed to be under test Java. These directories are relative from the point where the POM file exists. There are ways to change these directories, but it's easier to just use the defaults. The defaults are based on years of experience and Java best practices. So your next thought might be, well, if Maven is assuming where everything is, why do I need to create anything? Why do I need to create the POM file? And shouldn't the startup be the same for all projects? Well, in a way, yes. Maven uses something called an archetype. An archetype is a Maven project templating toolkit. It allows you to start with a project that is already set up to use the best practices. There are archetypes to create jar files, web archives, enterprise archives, portlets, Eclipse plugins, and just about every project you might need to create. There's even an archetype to create a project for defining, well, new archetypes. So to start, let's create a simple hello world jar. In a directory where you keep your code, let's type the following command. Now, the group ID here is where you want your project to live in the repository on your machine. You don't really totally need to understand that bit right now. Usually we use the base package that we plan to use for our project. In this example, we're going to use com.yourcompany for now. Now the artifact ID here tells us the name of our project. You'll want to use a single word without spaces here. This will end up being the name of the jar, war, ear, whatever project you create. It will also be the directory where your project lives. For this example, we'll use hello world app. So let's run this command and see what happens. So you'll want to confirm your selections at the end by typing Y at the prompt. And then we're done. Your project should look something like this. Now open the POM file in either text edit or notepad or whatever you're using to open text files on your system. You will see that it's similar to the POM file that we looked at earlier. This POM file also added something called a dependency. A dependency is a library that your project depends on. The dependency in this project is for JUnit. So the project we just created already has JUnit testing built in and ready to go. We can add similar XML stanzas to add other dependencies to our project. We just ne need to specify the correct group ID, artifact ID, and version. You'll notice the JUnit dependency stanza also specifies a scope. The scope tells Maven when to include the dependency. Now at the top of your POM file, you'll notice the group ID and artifact ID we provided are also in the POM file. If we were to include our project in another project, we'd include these values in the same way we referenced JUnit. 
So what's great about all this is that we can take this directory, give it to someone else, and if they have Maven installed, everything will just compile using the same commands. There's no special setup needed to run this on another machine. So in this video, we've looked at POM files and archetypes. We've also had a quick look at how dependencies are added to our Maven projects. Later in the course, when we're ready, we'll use a different archetype for our web service project. For now, we'll continue exploring the basics of Maven using this archetype. In the next video, we'll look at how we can specify other Java libraries while we take a deeper look at the Maven POM file.